Assalamu alaikum, hello viewers. Today we will be discussing about cooling towers. This is a very common element of HVAC systems, our power plants, or any system that needs air conditionings or central air conditionings. But we will be discussing about the type that's used mainly in power plants today. Um, these have various types, but we will go through a little, little fraction of it. So today we will be discussing about natural circulation cooling towers. See, by, from the name we can realize that there is no external forces that would be implemented in the flow of the cooling fluid or, or coolant fluid that would be cooling our system so let's have a raw sketch of it today we will not be discussing something really practical things rather somewhat practical but not the actual practical design because there will be much more considerations about this and we will just be just making it as simple as possible and since it's very simple we will try to keep it so it will not have too much details rather it would be just a raw part and raw idea about what it looks like only so let's do it initially let's draw a line and since it's gonna be the base basic line so it will be the height of the cooling tower usually it's varying from a huge range varying in a very detailed range depending upon what the weather conditions are what geometric geographic conditions what the natural resources you have depending upon these situations engineers design a variety of cooling towers on their plants so roughly we'll just take the height for this sketch as 150 meters usually they are much more than this they are possible than this they might be smaller than this let's just to make it defined we just consider the bottom point with the origin all right then now we just will be revolving some kind of the outer shape of the cooling tower at the moment so let's do it let's make a line and there's gonna be a convergent and divergent part of nearly every cooling tower depending upon the usage the degree would be differing from one to another but for the time being we'll just be doing those dimensions it's kind of approximation so let's do it and for the moment I'll be using a spline instead of a tangent curve since it might just serve us better there now a line to close the sketch this curve out here spline is mathematically more of a polynomial equation a straight line is a equation of single parameter and the power of the variable will be one and the number of points that i have clicked here would be the highest power in the equation of the variable so as this sketch is nearly done we're just revolving it axis of rotation that would be this one and we'll have the approximate shape of our cooling tower now let's just make a little more precise by adding some more dimensions let's add this one so this is not so big nearly about 55 or 57 meters like that 
and this one would be smaller than that. So this should be the ra essence is the radius of this upper circle. This should be around well somewhat 38 meters. Now the problem is this one. So for this we'll be just bleeding and making another spline that would serve as the best and then there much better for the time being we'll be using somewhat uniform thickness uniform wall thickness of this one but in practice the lower parts will be much more thicker since they, they have to carry a higher amount of weight and for the removal of this part we may just use any other things like shell or maybe a loft cut whatever you like but for the ease at the moment we will be just using the shell feature as we have shown it on the previous series while making the house the wall thickness would be more or less um, half a meter or 0.4 meters let's say the, about this one is 0.4 and since the bottom part is yet present we just take the section view draw a sketch on this plane to remove the lower part since this part would be sucking the air inside so let's do it and making it shoot cut there now we need some kind of support usually the base support is made up of steel structural steel truss so since we will not be making those complicated or complex trusses we will just be simplifying it furthermore for that we will have to make a 3d sketch since there's no certain plane for us to sketch on so we'll be starting a 3d sketch and starting with the line see there are two coordinates coordinate points available at the point at the moment and since there are three coordinates three co axis coordinate system if we press and drag it and while pressing it we just keeping keep it up it would just be drawn in a sing single plane but if we want things to be a little complicated we might just have done it otherwise rotate things like this and even in other planes as well the plane that we will be drawing is indicated subscript under the pencil that is shown in the drawing area and let's just do this part get normal to this draw truss a base might just be a little curved and will not be making as straight as this one rather a little Lengthened. This is because it m might just feel a little more strain and a little more strain energy is stored in this that might just give us a better amount of weight carrying capability. Now let's get out of the sketch. Sketch on this plane that would be a rectangle. this one for the basic truss element 
for that we will be just sweeping in the base body the profile is selected is this one this sketch we just made since it was selected and the path would be this one and this shows us a preview how would it look like if you're satisfied let's hit it okay now we just mirror it out See which one suits us the best? Yes, the front plane. There you go. This is just a single part of the multiple lines. Now we just make a circular pattern of it. So the base one, 15 will be good enough for us. The previous good enough for us as well. So let's hit OK. There. We have the base, we have the cooling towers. Usually, in a practical sense, there are some more trusses, the more cross trusses for extra amount of loading capability, and there will be fills made up of plastic sheets or some kind of other plastic materials or other elements as well. Alright, now let's give it some aesthetics the material of this part is varying in various countries in various power plants depending upon the resources depending upon the situations but we'll just go for the available ones that we have out here most often in various bigger countries nuclear power plants you will see this one might just be RCC or reinforced concrete cement uh, might just be a structural steel now for the time being we'll just be going to steel or maybe just stone just brick might just go for fabrics same for this inner section as well and these parts let's say make them some kind of iron thing made iron or something I'm just looking for something that's more capable of differentiable metal, copper just for the appearance, since this is not the actual material, I'll just give it an appeal of copper. How about that? Yeah, good enough. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.